maybe 1,500 up to 100 grand. It's diminishing returns the more you, you go up. So I use Black Magics, they're cheap. I've got lots of them because I do live mm -hmm. work. So I can either have like one red or I can have, you mm -hmm. know, 10 Black Magics. Mm -hmm. Probably one of my favorite looking movies of the last mm -hmm. couple of years. And my favorite scene of that was shot on some 50 pound lenses. You could be wrong mm -hmm. and fix it in post. Mm -hmm. It's all about the story you want to tell. What's the price range for the cinema cameras? Oh, they can vary massively. So you can go from like a, I don't know what the cheapest cinema camera would be, maybe a Blackmagic. So you can mm -hmm. go from maybe 1,500 up to 100 grand plus for like an Alexa. And, of there's, some kind. and there's just a camera without, without the optics. Yeah. And the I mean, you can get one lens for 100 grand. Mm -hmm. Do you get like the right anamorphic? <laughs> Can you explain to me, is it worth it? Like, does the picture really looks like it was shot like a 200 grand if you take like a camera and a lens <laughs> in comparison to like any kind of other camera that is also cinema camera, but it's kind of like, you know, in the entry level or maybe mid level range. No, I don't think it, you, it's, Diminishing returns the more you, you go up. So I use Black Magics, they're cheap. I've got lots of them because I do live mm -hmm. work. So I can either have like one red or I can have, mm -hmm. you know, 10 Black Magics. Mm -hmm. And I actually slightly prefer the, the image of the Black Magics, not because it's better, because it's like we said, it's more, to me, human, it's more mm -hmm. human. Um, so what would be the point for the price like that? The higher up you go, the less improvements you get, but you just get slight quality of life kind of you have a bit more dynamic range which means that you're not having to fight the mm. exposure so much you could be wrong mm. and fix it in post mm -hmm. like uh if you the more dynamic range you are the more you're less you're going to overexpose the sky or underexpose the shadows mm. so there's that side of things um they could have better metadata which helps you with mm. post work uh, they could have more, like more reliable recording things to stop cards corrupting. I've had cards corrupt on a black magic, mm. and it's the last thing you want. So I guess it's peace of mind. And when something's so established in Hollywood, of you rent this camera, you don't buy the hundred grand cameras. You rent them, mm -hmm. and the production pays, and mm -hmm. it's it's almost an ignored cost. So mm. there's no reason for them to say, let's get this really cheap camera because they're happy with paying the, this other mm. one. So. If you can get the best of the best, even though it's marginally the small increments better. As far as glass, like it all depends what you want. Like the Batman is probably one of my favorite looking movies of the last mm. couple of years. And my favorite scene of that was shot on some 50 pound lenses. Yeah. <laughs> and they were just adapted. And that's the, the scene with the Batmobile. And you can buy the lenses they shot on eBay for about 50 pounds. Mm. And why did they use those lenses? Because they're filthy. <laughs> <laughs> They've just got such an organicness to it that's just problems, which lots of people like. And it's uh -huh. like why people like anamorphic, because they look not right. And they've got mm -hmm. a tone to them that it's, again, adding that humanity, organic mm -hmm. flares and bits where it's out of focus here and mm -hmm. warping a bit there. And when you have, like, again, it's like with, with the, um, the reds, they're pristine and you can get, like, uh, Ari Master Primes, which are like really good lenses, but they're super clean, super sharp. Mm -hmm. They've got nothing interesting about them, mm. but they're good at capturing. And again, they're two that go together in heaven, which is the red and the Ari's. Mm. If you want something super pure, but lots of cinematographers now, they're like, what we want to find this dirty lens and mm. adapt it. And like, again, um, Army of the Dead by Schneider, he found some really cheap lenses mm. and he adapted them and he was like, these are crazy and just shot a whole movie on them. And there's problems all over it, which are kind of cool. And he's like, most loads of these shots are out of focus. He got told in an interview and he mm. said, I'm surprised half the film is in focus because these lenses are so crap. But he loved it. He loved the look of it. <laughs> that's, that's interesting. Like, so you just, you just shoot yourself in the food and they're like, well, yeah, that's great. <laughs> but it just gives a tone. It gives a vibe. Like you do, you wouldn't watch Batman and go, 
I wish this was shot on Master Primes because that's part of the tone. It's the mugginess of the city. It's mm. the dirt. But again, you don't want to shoot a, a Christmas film like that. Mm. They want to be shot like pristine and everything's perfect and everything's. Mm. Well, may, or maybe you do, but no one will let you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's all it's all about the story you want to tell, mm. and I I think that's that everything you choose, whether it's the camera, the lens, the the LUT, the costume, everything is pushing the story and how, mm. how that needs to be told, the tone that you want to give.